Welcome to Gnostic Media's podcast, Unspun, episode number 111. Hopefully everything is working today and everyone can hear both Holly and I. Holly's here with me in the mountains in California. We're with Mark. Unfortunately, Robert couldn't make it and uh, so missed out on that opportunity. Welcome, Holly. Good to have you here. Thank you. And good to have you back, Mark. Thanks for having me, Jan. And uh, so, you know, we wanted to get in and, and finish the episode that we were doing last time, uh, which is part two on Kabbalistic inversion, the fallacy of inversion, helping people understand uh, what inversion is specifically. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty deep, vast topic. We tried to fit it into two hours last time, and it was a little bit too much. So. First of all, we should probably, you know, just recap what is the definition of inversion. Um, so, you want to start with inversion? Me? Right. Okay. So, uh, we've got a definition here. What is, where, we, where is this from? Is this just uh, from uh, the dictionary? Uh, it was probably, I probably grabbed it from you, the OED. It's just, you, a, it's just you, a definition. Okay, so it's basically a reversal of position, order, form, or relationship, or a normal word order. So word play, the placement of a verb before a subject, and the process or result of changing or reversing relative positions of the notes of a musical interval or chord or phrase so it's both in linguistics music art film everywhere you look there's inversion antinomianism so uh let's see we have webster's definition of inversion to change the order and this is webster's 1828 uh, so that it, so that the last becomes first and first last turning or ch a turning or change of the natural order of things and that's key the natural order it is just the inversion of an act of parliament your lordship first signed it and then it was passed among the lords and commons and then two change of places so that each takes place takes the place of the other a turning backwards a contrary rule of operation which is key Problems in geometry and arithmetic are often proved by inversion as division by multiplication and multiplication by, by division. And then uh, in grammar, a change of the natural order of words of all vices. Impurity is one of the most detestable instead of impurity is one of the most detestable of all vices. And then, uh, you know, so that's kind of just a recap on what we were discussing last time so uh and those of you who didn't catch part one you'll probably want to do so because there's a lot covered in that so what we're going to do is try to hit all of the uh key things in part uh you know for part two here you want to jump in mark yeah um just a, a clarification when we talk about inversion it's not just a lie it is a form of a lie but a lie could be something where I just totally misdirect you in a different direction. Inversion is actually taking the truth and then just flipping it. So uh, don't get it confused with the lie. And the reason why our topics went so long is it's, it is probably, to my assessment, is the number one tool of the powerful group that's running the show and the mind control opera operation, you know, with television. Right media, et cetera. So it's, it's a flipping or a reversal. It's not just a lie of misleading. So, you know, and one thing that we should point out, though, it does fall in most instances, it is a type of informal fallacy. Uh, so that, of course, there's probably over 200 different types. There's like 50 listed in the brain database, but uh, Kabbalistic inversion is listed in there. And it is a specific, it does fall under a specific it is, a, it is a lie itself, a type of fallacy, but it's a very specific type of lie. Like somebody asked last time, okay, so it's like a fancy way of saying the person is lying. No, it's a specific type of lie or a specific type of fallacy. So you have ad hominem attacks, poisoning the well, slippery slope, red herring fallacy, 
appeal to emotion, all of these different types of fallacies. So the fallacy of inversion is literally taking something, well, let's say if we have a pyramid, and we'll go into that more, and we're going to invert it so that, you know, truth becomes the lie and the lie becomes truth. And we see, I mean, this is, since identifying this fallacy and seeing it used everywhere, I would say it's probably one of the most common uh, fallacies that we see out there. So in terms of like last week in the, you know, we had E. Michael Jones on and discussing logos and then you and Robert on were, uh, were on the show before that and we were discussing the inversion and these all go together because when we discuss logos, logos being reason, logic, truth, all of these things, uh, the inversion is going to be the opposite of that. So it would be antinomianism. Uh, it's going to be the exact opposite of truth. They're going to flip everything to its inversion. Yes. Anybody else want to add to that? Well, you know, it, just the classic inversion is like war is peace, right? So you have, you have peace, and then the uh, antonym of that would be war. So then you flip it, and then they say stupid stuff like, well, we've got to go over there and take it to them, or they're going to take it to us. That's how we have our peace, or freedom isn't free, or, you know, so it's, it's really just a reversal of what natural order is and truth is, and then flipping it. It's not a misdirection or all, like Jan was saying, all the many different ways of lying. It's literally just taking your antonym, like, let's get back to grammar school, you know, it's opposite you say something's hot the inverter will say no that is so cold it's it's really you could look on it it's the true opposite or inversion of the word well it's like and, if if you say oh that's instead of saying that's good someone says oh that's badass or something oh, like that and right? and what in the 70s and 80s do you remember dude that's so bad right or if something was you know really cool we'd say it's fat i mean it it's even fat. in Sick, dude. These it's are the all inversions. Ball. Yeah. Well, and, and and who creates the fashion? Who creates the terminology? It's the gatekeepers. It's the people who control education, the media, the music. So that's why all this stuff gets injected. It's not organically grown from our youth. No. So you said war is peace. Uh, that's from Brave New World. So that's like a very um, in your face. I mean, if you know anything about pop culture, that's people learn about that. I mean, I, I think people are still supposed to read that in high school. And mm. also, Jan, you just showed an image of inversion there. That's from Manly P. Hall, I believe. And that's yep, where sorry. I first I'll put it. About... I, I'm trying to find a place to put it so it's not covering all of us here. I'll stick it right in between us all. There we go. Right. And, so... and that's, you know, and that is out of Manly P. Hall's book, <laughs> Secret Teachings of All Ages. And uh, that is like a king or a wizard or whatever, I don't know. You'd have to read the description down there, which I can't see it. But it's showing the Star of David, and, and it's showing him as a reflection with his arms out, you know, and there's a line across the middle there with, uh, you know, top and bottom. So we see the Star of David. The reflection is the inversion. So when you look at yourself in a mirror, that's actually a type of inversion, you know, literally. So you're seeing the exact opposite of yourself. You know, you could say mirror, mirror on the wall. Um, whenever you have the reflecting pond, I mean, look at in Washington, you know, the big reflecting pool, the, these inversion. I mean, what is it reflecting on the giant phallic symbol? Is that what it's doing? Yeah, um, and uh, John D was uh, one early magicians. If you look into traditional or simple magic, they always start with mirrors. And um, it just goes into this day. I mean, people even talk about of computer screens being a mirror of sorts. So, um, you know, so what are we, what are we doing? Are we using this tech for good or are we inverting? Like what, what are we doing as humans with our magic phones? You know, the mirrors of the magic phone. Yeah, indeed. Inverting life. Well, you know, even, uh, you know, and you and I have talked about this before, Mark, like ethernet is an inversion mm -hmm. of, you know, thinking Holy Spirit. the truth and whatnot, you know, like an Ethernet, for those who don't know, is, you know, like your Ethernet cables are what you run the, the computer network. So that's an inversion. Um, 
Let's yeah, see an inversion of the definition of words themselves and their meanings in many cases being opposites is from Trivium Think, correct? And there was somebody else that posted a good one a minute ago. Now I'm not sure where it went. Oh, Adam said uh, satire. You know, and the satire is mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, like pan. Uh, you know, one of, yeah, the, oh. so one of the Satanist uh, uh, symbols. Well, wouldn't sarcasm... Sarcastic. Yes, wouldn't sarcasm? My my wife hates sarcasm because she always says, you know, you say the opposite, but yeah. you're really you're you're going, oh, that was amazing, that was really good, <laughs> and then you know you get away with basically insulting them, but but you're like, what? I complimented you, you know, I thought it was good. Yeah. I'm trying not to be so sarcastic. Because I know it's hurtful, you know, and it is an inversion. And the more that we realize it, you know, it's, it's, you know, like you said, it's different from lying, but it's also not truthful. Right. Well, yeah. and Gino Denning taught me like eight years ago that sarcasm is a sign of insecurity when you use it. So another good reason to not use sarcasm, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you're, it's a leftist, it's a left-hand path technique because, right. you know, you just jump into Saul Lins Linsky's Rules for Radicals, right? right. They, they, they're never going to win an intellectual debate, especially when you deal with truth. So they just ridicule and, and make fun and sarcasm. And So, all right, so let's see, what was next here in our chart? Oh, yeah, there's more symbols of inversion here. I'll just try to put this here, cover, see if I can get it somewhere. So... Anyway, this one's kind of more of the same symbol. It's just showing you how it's, you know, an inversion there. So, Once you get you, the pentagram, that? you got, oh, that's a good one right there. Yeah, you, you can see it, correct? Well, then you got, you know, the OTO. That's, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're coming straight out of the Thelema, and which goes back to Kabbalistic. Um, you have the male symbol and the female intertwined there. Uh, you have the, the trinity of the triangle, which I was expressing last time, if you, you know, when you look at the bottom, it's wider at the bottom of the triangle. And this is where the left-hand path is stuck, right? The truth is somewhere in there. I don't know. There are the base level of, of soul in between your temples. That mind is so babyish because they don't know how the trivium, how does the trivium work? Yon, we go, we hit something, we're like, whoa, feedback loop. And as we keep going, the, the errors get less and less. So now it's, now it's going closer. And as I get towards the top, the error and the deceptions, the clarity becomes there and you, reach, you get to that point of truth. And then that's the goal, right? That's the life, lifelong goal. But then you invert it, what we were saying, which is a big thing. So the inversion of not only using as a male symbol or a female symbol, but if you use the trinity of finding truth or the trivium of finding truth and invert it, now, instead of trying to seek truth, they tell you what the truth is. And you can and see the, the Trivium logo right there with truth in the middle, and they invert the process. And then what they'll do is they'll tell you that thinking who, what, where, when, why, and how doesn't matter. You know, uh, you just, you, you make it up. Whatever you think is real. Reality doesn't exist. It's a figment of your imagination you're not of the world, the world is of you. They invert it again, right? Yeah. So they literally invert reality so that, you know, this is what the left-hand path does so that, that, you know, and this is why mysticism is the tool of tyrants as well, because you can't verify anything in that, you know, in that sense. It's, it's all your own experience. The same thing when you take psychedelic drugs or whatever, it's just all based on this personal thing that you can't experience in the commons whereas truth is always available in the commons yeah it's a great you know it's it's great when you want to become a man god and universe between your you know two ears and and just live your own reality it's you know that's but if you want to interact in real reality and truth and natural law and that which has been here and will continue to be here uh, let, you uh, gotta, let, Holly, uh, let Holly jump in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I was going to talk about, um, I've done a lot of museum work in the past, and um, I was working at an art museum, and we used to give tours of the pieces of art, talk about the techniques, the history, the who, what, when, where, why, and how of art, and then 
uh, the mode in which we were giving tours was suddenly changed and it was all about us asking the people taking the tour how they felt about everything and so it just became about just like the feelings like what sort of emotions do you get out of this or like it just totally became visceral and they pushed anyone out who actually had art history knowledge or technique knowledge and it just completely i mean people didn't want to go on tours anymore because it was just like how, do, how does this art make you feel you know that's that that's when it becomes you know i mean modern art is a perfect example of inversion more awesome is awesome fool that's you know so some good. of my some of my ex-students who are like would fit in the millennial category they it's so funny when i say bring in the grammar who what when where you know and they're like how archaic mr warhol <laughs> i mean that is so old i'm like oh yeah that technique to find truth is an old technique you're right it is and they're like why do you stick to that and because it's still the best way to get to truth right right and uh thanks anthony for donating uh ten dollars twice really appreciate that and uh so let's get in now you've been doing a lot more research on the star of david now we had one image in there i'm going to put this one up on screen i don't know if we want to talk about this one much this uh purple image can you see that one up on the uh, youtube screen oh it'll probably be popping up in the next second there it There's is yeah, that one I didn't put up. Uh, you know, you could still look at it and look at the six, you know, from the from the hexagram, the six pointed star. You could see that there's a triangle that's pointing up and down. They put in the different, I, I don't know if that's arcanas or personalities or, um, and then I don't know, you know, I, I'm not familiar with this one. Is this yours, Jan? Or? Uh, I found it online, but yeah, you know, you can see the six points on the outside and then inverted the six points on the inside. So is the inversion of Prince a bard and of a knight a page? I'm not sure. That's that's a good question. I'm not sure about bard and Prince. I don't know. So um, the all of this is all from uh, tarot as well. So mm. And it's also uh, Jung picked up on all these archetypes as well. So if you uh, look at that image as well, it's kind of the, uh, the lines that go between this, uh, the different archetypes and Kabbalah too. So it's the transmutation of each of these archetypes. So um, change, uh, the witch brings about change, the maid creates, she becomes the mother, the knight, he can, he can exploit like the page, they can go forward uh, with mm. power. The mage or the seer is to know. The bard and the prince is uh, the young man symbol that wants to destroy. The rogue and the thief is to steal, and then they they cross hatch over each other. So this I don't I've never seen this symbol before, but this pretty good. Yeah, I think this definitely ties in with if you look at the the Kabbalah tree, and if you study tarot, which um, Alistair Crowley was the supposedly the first to connect all of the uh, different archetypes of the tarot with the tree of Kabbalah. And he did that in the early 20th century and that really revolutionized their uh, evil magic ways in the 20th century. <laughs> Somebody wrote uh, therapist, the rapist. That's always a good one. Um, so, uh, and then tamper tantrum says the top triangle represents the number seven. The bottom triangle represents the number eight, which gives the 6.786 or mm. bismillah irata, I'm not gonna, in Arabic, which is why you find it often in mosaics. So thanks for that. And uh, so let's uh, go on now. We talked a little bit about now, this one is going to be the uh, upside down pentagram, which Satanists use. And of course that is an inversion of the upright pentagram, which represents the upright man. So they literally invert, invert it. You know, and we should also point out that it's, you know, the thesis, antithesis equals synthesis. That's what a lot of, you know, such as the Hegelian dialectic or the Marxist dialectic, uh, these polar opposites. And then they try to walk you right into the middle of it. So with social engineering and whatnot going on, they're trying to birth the new man through the center of the Star of David rather than through 
logos, and uh, we'll get into that more here in a minute. Uh, what I want to do is try to jump into some of these other topics. So uh, a good one for you, Mark, would be uh, learning versus compulsory learning. What do you say about that? <laughs> You're trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> oh. um, yeah. uh, well, look, well look, why, just... why would you want to tell the audience why you would get in trouble for that? Okay, well, I've been a public educator for 27 years. And you homeschool your own children. And I do homeschool my own children. And and that is not a reflection of the teachers that I work with who are absolutely amazing in my school. And the dedication and the truth that does come and is acquired in these classrooms. However, uh, when it's compulsory, for example, up in our school district and many districts, you get this thing called a SARB process which means after missing too many days of school, they actually have a SAR meeting and then they could actually fine you, take you into court. It becomes almost criminal. And I just find that ludicrous because my kids are on the mountain ski program up here. So they would leave like 40 minutes before school got out on Fridays for the ski program that's sponsored by the district. And, and we get SARBed for excessive excused uh, early leaves. So when you force someone or you compel somebody with the threat of the judge to learn what they they're feeding you, that's that's indoctrination. So uh, you know, learning is a, a process that, that you desire. When you mentioned it to Dr. Jones, can you find logos if you're not seeking it? And he said, no, really quick. And I was like, oh, thank God, because I keep saying I don't waste my time with people aren't, who don't seek truth, right? Um, exactly. The same the same thing goes at school. If, if, if you have to go there at threat of your parents being arrested and to learn, then is it really learning? I, you know, my classroom, a lot of learning takes place because, you know, thank goodness, synchronicity running into you, Jan, and the trivium, and then walking the trivium and practicing it. We just eat, sleep, and breathe trivium in my classroom, which is more powerful than regurgitate, regurgitating facts, you know. Yeah, and when they're, you know, 20, 25, it'll all hit them what they learned in sixth grade, you know, funk. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, they're getting so good at the indoctrination using the emotion. I mean, geez, they're, they're now, uh, think about this inversion. They are now using students as tools of protest, as teaching them to be justice social justice warriors or protesters when when it used to be like wow the teachers would be like oh my gosh the kids are going to protest you know what are we going to do that's suspendable i mean when i went to damien it's an all-boys catholic school uh, i got busted i had uh, several five-hour detentions where i had to scrub the toilet with the toothbrush sorry damien if you get in trouble for that um for putting jesus posters all over the school saying jesus could not attend damien because back then heavy metal was cool and we weren't allowed to have our hair touch the collar. <laughs> so we put up these Jesus posters and I thought that would be funny because I mean, talk about hypocrisy. Um, so we had all these long haired Jesus pictures. They found out, of course, you know, the wimps squealed, but they said it was called a protest and we're not allowed to do that. And now, you know, fast forward 2018, Go and protest. We're going to give you time. You don't have to go to school even. So. Right. Yeah. Is it a protest if it's school sponsored? <laughs> right. Yeah. The government didn't have anything to do with the anti-gun walkouts. Uh-huh. Wink, wink. I mean, we talk used to about protest inversion. government. So and then, you know, you know, another good one is just truth itself is constantly inverted into the lie. You know? Oh, yeah. And Common Core, listen, people would go, this is crazy, this is crazy, or these people are stupid. And, and I, I try to explain to them what the inverse of reason and rationality, right, is irrationality or, let's say, chaos. They just want to create chaos. So the, the more ridiculous a law or stupid or nonsensical it is, we all go, what? What? That isn't. And then we try to go reason with our friends and they're like what that makes sense to me and just creates more um dissension and division it works perfectly right all right how about scientism holly and versus science oh gosh uh, okay 
Well, I think it's a, a, what we were just talking about, you know, the trivium, the who, what, when, where, and then, you know, of course, later, why and how. And so we have this promotion of science, which Jan and I have been discovering really started with the launch of the Enlightenment. And so in the 1600s, 1700s, the Enlightenment was meant to become the new religion of the masses. And so it becomes, I was looking on uh, Twitter today and it was like Time Magazine and they were talking about, you know, how the planets look or how the planets smell and what they, you know, uh, and people just accept that, you know, like we, I'm not going to get too far into it, but you know, how can we start to look into this as, as citizens and as people, or are we just accepting whatever we're being told as dogma with science and that can be with anything with medicine i mean i've talked about allopathic medicine before just the idea of you know having the experts run science versus being the natural exploration of nature as humans right and and having some expert uh using ad vericunium or appeal to authority tell you what to think and hey you know <coughs> We put it through our peer review process, and and therefore it's true. So you know, and never mind that you you get a bunch of people who are all in on the gag, and they all peer review something, and then you have a closed loop system where you have control. For instance, you know, for 70, 80 years they told us eat high grain and eat low fat. Well, we ended up with the <coughs> sickest, most obese, most unhealthy population. In the history of the of the world you know and then you know i like early on when i started this show nine years ago i was in the hospital in peru and uh almost died on my son's third birthday from this nonsense and then to cure myself you know what did i do i started eating high fat cut all the grains and you take that that food pyramid if i can even do a pyramid with my hands geez you take the food pyramid and you flip it again and then this you know instead of grains being the foundation grains should be the smallest, smallest. If, if if you eat it at all you know and then uh but a lot of these things are inversions again so they keep inverting this stuff um every and then every aspect essentially has an inversion they they inverted uh christianity you know uh christian we see it constantly like holly and i have been investigating the puritans and salem and everything this was an attack by the purim or pseudo christians and judaism had, had been outlawed and then what they did is they hid behind christianity during its outlaw did these things and then blamed the christians for it and then after usury and things were legalized they went back to judaism and and puritanism is completely gone now we don't even see it you know out there anymore so you were talking about just quickly back to the food pyramid i mean we found out that you know i mean this is just common knowledge now that it was like the sugar plantation companies and you know major corporations who invest in and promote sugar and uh were the ones who are promoting the low-fat diet yeah you know it's it's slave food that's I taught ancient civilizations for over a decade and, and, and the biggest thing was the fertile crescent and how all the grain stores for their animals were able to be converted so it could be digested for humans through fermentation and bread. And then I'm just like going, wait a minute. So the freedom of tribes moving and more nomadic, now they could stay. They don't have to farm and pay attention to the weather. They could eat the bread. They could do all the building and slave work for the price of food and security. And then the kings and queens don't have to pay for them when they get older because they're going to die of inflammation and get weak and get diseases. So it's like it was brilliant. And, you know, even when you hear the truth, it takes time. You know, I was really exploring quantum mechanics and quantum physics and science. And, and of course, how knowing Jan just does he cuts the chase and just goes, oh, that's all a bunch of crap. <laughs> You know, that's mysticism. And I'm like, no, it's science. And then when he challenged me, oh, oh really? I thought science was provable. I thought it's repeatable. It could be shared in the comments. And this is what happened. And it's a brilliant inversion. Science went from the pursuit of truth 
that could help us live in more harmony. Somebody posted, was Jesus real? Well, here's the, we'll get to that later, but Jesus would be the perfect example of living within natural law. So, but anyways, if you take that truth and living with the natural law, everybody could go, hey, it did, it made my life better. It, yeah, it made my life better. And now with quantum mechanics, it's like, you can't see it. And if you do see it, your will of desiring what to see affects it. And, and it might be different for you. So it, it means like truth is all relative. And I still hear that from some um, self-professed brilliant people. And it's, it's insan insanity if you can't come to a common understanding of truth and share that experience. And then, uh, you know, when people get into the argument of Jesus existed or not, or was real or not, that's irrelevant. It's logos incarnate, it's truth incarnate. And when you get that, everything else starts making sense. If you're arguing over if he was like, you know, Caesar's, you know, creation or, you know, uh, with Josephus or some nonsense, you're missing the entire point. It's about truth incarnate and going around exposing all the lies and the bullshit. That's really the main point. And anyone who's trying to cover that up is covering it up because they don't want you to see the obviousness of, you know, spending a few hours to read the 400 pages that explains it all. And most people who ask questions like that or say things like that, they haven't read it themselves. Absolutely. The, you know, the Kazari, that book I just showed, was fascinating because they take truth and they deify it, right? They said the delivery of truth, if you want to affect the masses, you can't just go on a concept of truth. you got to deify it, and then you could create a priest class of who could contact them, what's needed. So that's what happens. They're like, oh, Jesus is your Christian deification of truth. No, he's, he just... The greatest example of living in that and that's the people can't do that because they don't understand that technique of taking a truth putting it on to a person to deify for the purpose of control so i'm gonna disagree with you a tiny bit Jan. just on a technicality here i think it does matter that jesus was a person because first of all people um need to be able to see as humans you know how how to be a good person and you know, if we're supposed to believe as Christians that, you know, Jesus died for us so that we could be forgiven. I mean, we're, we all make mistakes. We're all sinners in that sort of way. So it's our ability to be able to be forgiven at, versus like predestination or like you said, truth is relative. So therefore nothing matters. So therefore I don't need to be a good person. And I kind of fell down this rabbit hole because when I was in high school, I read, uh, my teacher gave me the book Siddhartha, and it was about the story of, you Herman know, was, right, it was a re, uh, 19, I think late 50s, early 60s retelling of, uh, the Buddha, the story of the Buddha, and basically it taught me, like, I needed to go into hell and, uh, go and do a bunch of terrible stuff before I could become enlightened, and, uh, I see now as an adult, like, that's, that's a really terrible way of, of trying to figure out how to live your life. And if we can teach people to skip that, you know, if you can help it, if you can help prevent that sort of doing terrible stuff instead of diving into it, like uh, it was basically promoted with Siddhartha. Yeah, my, my point really is that I think if you're arguing over whether Jesus existed or not, you're missing the whole point of the story. That's really exactly. what I'm getting at. And most people that I see who make that or try to make that argument have never read it. Obviously, there are the Satanists and the tricksters out there who spin it and want you to believe that, uh, that you know, none of the story is real. But to me, you know, it's about, you know, the hero that you become, essentially, when you wake up in truth and logos and live and walk in truth and it's and it's the hero that we can all become through logos and thanks at, uh, anthony for supporting the show again uh anybody else please uh you know uh support the show i really appreciate it. anthony has supported or donated three times tonight and nobody else has so good job anthony <laughs> So, you know, why don't we get into, um, and there's so many messages going across right now, I can't keep up on them all, but uh, feminism versus MGTOW is another good 
inversion. You know, first the CIA, well, even going back all the way back to Anne Hutchinson from, uh, from going way back into the Puritan days in the 1600s, she leaves and creates Rhode Island. And she's basically the first feminist or, you know, suffragette, etc. And then, you know, Gloria Steinem and the CIA promoting, you know, all of that nonsense. And of course, uh, we've exposed that Gloria Steinem was the CIA, you know, dozens of times on the show. If anybody wants to see that, they can pull it up in the brain database. Let's see. So Gloria Steinem. And then it's, the quote is right there. Uh, I might quote Miss Gloria Steinem, one of those so assisted who commented that the CIA wanted to do what we wanted to do, present a healthy, diverse view of the United States. And I never felt I was being dictated to at all. And that's uh, the former head of the CIA, William Colby, quoting Gloria Steinem, one of the many, many uh, CIA agents and assets that uh, led the phony counterculture throughout the... Uh, you know, well, even into the present, we still have all of the phonies out there. There's quite a number of them, uh, you know, uh, uh, just last week, um, E. Michael Jones pointed at, uh, at uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Peterson. Peterson. Jordan Peterson. You know, and Jordan Peterson, one. he even took over Timothy Leary's job at Harvard, you know, and that's the, that same thing, in my opinion, anyway. So, uh, what, did you have one? Oh, well, I just, I know the audience, like, uh, I think, you know, when you had brought up Jordan Peterson, a lot of people were, were pretty upset, you know, because I, I really like a lot of his talks, but yeah, you start to see, I mean, it gets to the point, I mean, as with any person, you, you hit the wall with them, you know, and, and, uh, um, there are some just, things he can't talk about so <laughs> yeah well which which e michael jones exposed there is this great and and look up e michael jones uh exposes uh jordan peterson in a in a short video that he did recently it's pretty good stuff but just think about just think about he's the he goes contrary to the narrative right so the feminine's being pushed and then here comes this guy from canada and he 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 speaks for the men and he gives us a voice in a very kind of not very alpha way, because I think he's kind of, you know, with his deep contemplation. I think he's still kind of he's not very alpha, but he's the hero for the man. And, and I'm like, wow, he's getting so much exposure. Now, just look at the truth. If a, if a real man was on a television and a news and started speaking that way, they'd cut him off saying, oh, we lost the sound and audio. Right. But here he's promoted everywhere. And I'm like, you know, that's what made me suspect. And as soon as Jan found out, he took, filled in Timothy Leary's position afterwards. I'm like, ding. <laughs> yeah, and I think it kind of, I mean, this sort of ties into inversion too, because it's like, it seems like you can see they'll have like a psyop, like, you know, this super radical feminism or whatever. And uh, they'll push it to its extreme limit and then just in time, there's like, here's the, here's the antidote, you know, here's Jordan yeah. Peterson, here's a, here's yeah. a man to put, you know, uh, keep uh, everyone corralled into the narrative that they want. And like someone said in the chat, you know, 6633. Well, and, and Jordan Peterson is constantly promoting uh, psychedelics, just like Tim Leary did out of that same damn department at Harvard. <laughs> And he was at McGill, where uh, you and Cameron did all of the human experiments. And he's heavily influenced by Aldous Huxley, who ran MK Ultra. I mean, uh, you know, he's he's connected in there. Also influenced by George Orwell, you know. So this is the same group of people that we've been exposing for years now, and he's right in the center of the same garbage so and, and you know, he's it's it's what they're doing now is they're using him to promote psychedelics with a masculine twist you know yeah yeah and it's it just you know he doesn't hit any of the hard truths that are going to empower people he just counters things like like when you're just mentoring abortion right so one of my thoughts of inversion is wow the canaanites used to practice the art of of when the firstborn's born they would sacrifice it Right. That was to their God, Baal and Molech. So so then you're like, then I start, you know, using the trivium. I'm like, wow, that practice. I wonder the historical 
if that's a historical practice being brought into a more acceptable way to consume it. Because I mean, we're seeing all that stuff on cannibalism and everything. This is all, this is all inversion of natural law. All these shows about everything's homosexual. Every single show has a homosexual. Every single show eats, you know, they're starting to talk about cannibalism and all this free sex and it's, it's everywhere. And so what Jordan Peterson does, he just kind of counters and says, you know, you got to stand up straight. You look like a man. You got to provide, you know, it's, it's, it's all the harmless stuff. And, and do ayahuasca and, yeah. and mushrooms and DMT, psilocybin. Discover uh, more of your inner manliness. Un uncommon conspiracies. Uh, thanks for the donation. He says uh, vaccines are a type of inversion. And I oh, yes. agree with that too. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's okay. This is the number one reason why we pulled our kids out of public education, right? Is that talk about inversion on the same people who scream for the right to kill their baby, unborn baby, I'll give them that, um, say that you have to inject chemicals in your body even if you don't want it. And I was like, well, what happened to your meme of it's my body, my choice? <laughs> so as soon as that, I'm just like, I ain't playing your game. You're gone. We're, they're out. You know, and that's what, you know, that's what the anti-vaxxers should do is uh, pick up that chant, my body, my choice, you know. Oh, they are, and they're pulling their kids out, and that's why, you know, California is going to have some law that's going to say, we got to protect the homeschoolers. Yeah, well, you know, and they, you know, and, and Trump is trying to block the whole forced vaccination things as well, and we've exposed that a couple of times. So male is an inversion of the female and vice versa, and then what they do for sex changes, they invert the male organ for a sex change. I mean, this... You know, again, it's inversion. It's, you know, constantly with the inversion. Are we getting uh, glitchy? I, what's that? Are we getting glitchy? Yeah, you're, yeah, a little bit. Let's see what's going on there. Yeah, anyway, it sure is. I, I figured as soon as I brought up, we brought up Jordan Peterson saying he avoids all these topics, and I start bringing it up. There goes the glitch. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, we are real glitchy. And there it goes green again. So sorry about the glitch there, folks. Uh, for those of you who got one, uh, they didn't like us talking about Jordan Peterson. Apparently, I'll behave, so, YouTube. I'll behave. Yeah, <laughs> CIA, Inc. You tell. They don't like us exposing all their crap. You know, they need to get over themselves. It's like, Don, you know, stop sending all your stupid trolls, and we know who's running them all. It's so obvious. You know what? The trolls was their big gig, right? They're like, let's create chaos and division. But the truth was winning out, so now they're straight up censoring. I mean, it's, it's, there's, it's undeniable censorship. I'm like, man, in the battle of ideas and truth, you got to let the stupid people in and the crazy opinions. And then we look and analyze it, and then we – we shoo it out just from pure reason and logic and truth. But now, you know, these people who bought into Snopes finding the truth for them, and now they're going to trust Zuckerberg and Google and YouTube and because they don't even know who these people are. They're the people that want to control you. They're, well, they are controlling you. And you are asking them to control the people that are, speak out against your tribe. It's just insanity. You want to hit uh, the next one? All right. Do you have one? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, another one is the healthcare industry versus sick care. Um, you know, the, the so called healthcare allopathic industry is mostly just dispensing drugs and medicine rather than getting to the root cause of disease, such as the low fat diet, high grains, carbos, sugars, uh, lectins, oxalic acid, phytic acid, stuff like that. And rather than focusing on low inflammation foods and ketosis, they focus on dispensing pills. Um, you know, and then modern churches enslave versus freeing us in logos. Uh, a lot of them do anyway. We can't say all, but uh, certainly a lot of them are more geared toward keeping their doors going rather than keeping the the the, the members in logos because. You know, when, when you get it, when you read the Bible itself, it says any, two, you know, two or what is it? Two or more gathered, gathered in, in my name is church. So that's, you know, it's like, that's as far as you really need to go with it. But, um, and then uh, Tartary, 
uh, they flipped the name Tartary itself into meaning hell, and then it was the most free place. They called them the, the Slavs, the slaves, and uh, the Hellenistic period, another inversion there. Did you want to hit that one? Um, which one were you talking about? Sorry. Hellenistic period. Uh, no, but I do <laughs> want to touch on the chat real quick because someone in the chat says, how does MGTOW tie to the CIA? and eugenics and just uh from my uh own personal research and the videos that i've done i think like a year a year and a half ago i did a couple of videos on migtow it means men going their own way and it was supposed to be the uh you know it's the the uh antidote to the radical feminism that right well and it's it's the it's the the male version and somebody else is asking me and thanks again anthony for donating he's four to <laughs> one tonight so thanks anthony for supporting the whole show almost tonight <laughs> or 80 percent of it and uh but it's the inversion of feminism so you know uh for feminism men are evil and men bad family bad it's all about suppression and kill your family tree rather than having a children and family and and you know being able to look back at the end of your life and enjoy what you've created you just got to have lots of lovers and you know not invest in your future and so it's it's just you know an inversion uh so now it's it's migtow is men saying women are terrible women are just all out to get men and money and blah 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 and, and we shouldn't build anything real so again they invert it so, so this so Mm, go ahead. So, so uh, what I find funny about the inversion of feminism is just to show you how men are so much weaker than women when it comes to acting macho. Uh, the reason why is that man is so driven by sex that he'll screw a, a, lo a lunatic leftist who's hot, right? <laughs> But but I don't. Most women, if you go in like the magto men, like like caveman, <laughs> alpha man, we don't need women. You know, I can't imagine any man you who sound still wants like a beta male or a homosexual or something. That's not really the best way to approach things. Yeah, you might not be into sex that much, I guess, because you ain't getting anything. So well, this Mac and if if they do, it's very short term uh, relationships. So just a two quick points on that so when i started to make videos critical of of make what i called the MGTOW movement i was just doing research and like looking where the symbol came from it's like a rune symbol and i need to follow up on that because i think there is something like esoteric to the whole thing and uh, some of my viewers were trying to help me find where this actually came from and it's kind of uh, occulted let's just say so when I start to do videos on it, which, you know, I think there is something to be said about the men's rights movement. It's kind of like 6633 as far as a lot of uh, men who joined MGTOW, they were like, I've sworn off women because I went through a horrible divorce. I got screwed over in the court system. The family court system, you know, is really terrible to fathers in a lot of ways. So I can see that. And they use that, um, you know, with 6633 to just say, you know, just continue to destroy the family. So when I started to do videos critical of what I called, I thought it was a PSYOP. I didn't really know what I was talking about back then before I had met Jan. Um, a bunch of trolls came in. Like, I was attacked uh, relentlessly. Even to this day, I get, like, you know, people will call me terrible names on those videos and i just assume they're trolls so i think there's something else to the uh how it started up and uh we'll have to follow up on that one of the one of the oh, comments just uh just a second mm -hmm. thanks to uh plup uh something or other 451 for throwing in 10 bucks for the show tonight we appreciate the support what i you want to say? say one of the commenters is really learning this inverse well and and he or she said oh well when feminism was created the thesis of feminism the antithesis would be maleism or magto right, right? Exactly. so and that so, proves my point that men are too scared because you know even though it already the inverse of feminism existed men know know that you've got to be sensitive to that woman this is the yeah. power of the woman. So now uh, another inversion is the word nice. Now that's mm. a really funny one that uh, comes up often. So I'm going to show this on screen here. 
Uh, this is, uh, I'm just going to have to cover you over for a second, Mark. Uh, mm. Nice, foolish, stupid, senseless, careless, clumsy, weak, poor, needy, simple, stupid, silly, uh, ignorant, unaware, not knowing. And so, you know, this, this word nice is constantly thrown around by people as it's a good thing to call someone nice. Mm. It's like, you know, yawn nice. is not nice. Well, that's actually a compliment, you know. So, you know, uh, you know, it's like. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I try not to be nice in that sense. Um, you know, I guess I could work on being tempered somewhat. Now, uh, sophistry is an inversion of truth and logos, etc. Oh, prestige. That's a really good one. Yeah, uh, you know, the, mo the movie The Prestige, right, about the magician, that's all inversion. Magic, man, you want to learn what inversion is and the tricks, just study magic tricks. Right. The, right. the esoteric club members know the trick. You don't, so you're in awe. <gasps> and so the uh, prestige means uh, deceits, impostures, delusions, juggling, uh, counseling tricks, Magic, illusion, grammar, delusion, illusion, uh, an illusion, a conjuring trick, a deception, and then uh, blinding or dazzling influence. So when you hear of these like Harvard, right? Prestigious. You know, and when you get that, uh, and thanks Joe Blow for the $20 donation and uh, good stuff. Uh, so, you know, Harvard, Yale, you know, when you get that they're tied to the Royal Society and the plagues and, the, you know, the creation of the witchcraft and they're intricately tied to the CIA you get that the prestige is actually just a magic trick a delusion so you know if you really want a real education these schools aren't where you want to go if you want to be a you know an agent or, or whatever and go around lying to people and and uh, doing antinomian bullshit that's where you'd want to go but the more people learn those tricks, the more and more ineffectual they're going to be like, you know, like flaccid pricks. Sorry for the analogy. Um, do you have Houdini in the brain database? I do. Let's see. Let me just pull that up. Up. Oh. At least I thought I did. H-O-U. H-O-U. Oh, there he is, Harry. So, tied to Laurel Canyon and Secret Service, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, who, of course, uh, uh, big... Uh, oh, Sherlock goodness. Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, big uh, agent promoter. And Anthony, again, my goodness, dude. Thanks for the support tonight. Jeez. Really appreciate all the support from Anthony tonight. But, uh, so... Uh, yeah, so Houdini, and I haven't done enough investigation into him. And then another one was uh, Maholland, uh, and of course, Laurel Canyon, Aldous Huxley, all of them all lived off of, uh, all of these things were all directly off of Maholland going through L.A. And this is where they were running MK Ultra and all of this stuff from. So uh, let's see. And we have a, uh, we're just, uh, we're about at the end of those examples. So, uh, well, you know, like the, the sexual, you just to add on that list, the sexual act of creation. That's right. A well, yeah, one. yeah, yeah. So why don't you hit those Mark? You want to, well, I think we already hit abortion, right? Yeah, we did. We did. We, we hit abortion. Um, uh, you know, which is all, you know, freedom and to have the freedom to do that. But, uh, the, the act of creation is really getting fascinating to me because uh, more and more people are getting C-sections. It's becoming much more clinical. You mean you know, Kazarian sections? I mean <laughs> Caesarean sections? Yeah. And so, you know, you're, you're, you're really sterilizing a natural process and making it more artful, an artificial thing. And... Uh, and pretty soon, I, th I could see a time where everything's going to be done that way. Um, do you remember I was telling you, Jan? Wow. That Able Danger, thank you for the $20 donation. Much appreciated. You know, they're, they're now can, they can now clone. They, can now, they said, we can now create life without male and female. 
but it's just another they're they're saying that to make you think that they've inverted nature they're just taking a clone and doing that which is still artificial let's see the entire bible is inverted by the satanists Salem, as we've uh, Holly and I have been showing extensively for the last couple of months, is a total inversion. Uh, we've talked with Robert, who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight, uh, that fathers in the church have been inverted. So, uh, you know, in the Catholic Church, the father is supposed to be a real father invested in the community because the community is his offspring. So they, the Catholic Church has inverted that, and so we end up with pedophiles and homosexuals that have destroyed the church's reputation and everything rather than you know being you know fighting for the community now they've become a laughing stock because of this and and what was it last week the current i forget pope's name is uh saying they need francis to, pope yeah is uh, we that they need to bring back you know marriage in the church of course they should they never you know as soon as they banned out uh, uh, marriage in the church, that was when the Catholic Church was inverted. So until that's set straight, um, you know, it's it, the the Catholic Church is inverted. And uh, thanks again for the kind comment uh, there, Abel Danger. Um, so uh, Frankenstein and the Resurrection is a is an inversion. So. You know, what they've done instead of the Christian resurrection coming up through logos and truth and logic and reason, uh, it's Frankenstein and they're bringing back the dead. They're resurrecting a dead, decaying body or, you know, creating a, a, a monstrosity, a monster from cobbling something together. And I think that ties directly in with transhumanism. I mean, you were talking about, you know, it starts off with C-sections and then they can grow you know, uh, babies in like a placenta bag. That's like another thing they're promoting now. And then uh, Frankenstein. So, um, and transhumanism tied in with the singularity. So people are going to want to download their souls or spirits into the, uh, the greater internet connection. And then we can live forever, of course. So it's all part of this plan to invert uh, humans. You know, that's what we're looking at with the, uh, transhumanism and uh, AI, the AI revolution that's being forced upon us right now is, uh, and free thought, you know, we're moving towards, as people see in the chat, when there's bots and there's trolls, that's, that's the inversion of human consciousness at this point. You know, you're, I, I hope we go in this direction now because you're absolutely right in that, that inversion is just the opposite, but what what Jan and I were talking about some of the symbols. I hope he starts to put up. It's that birth of the middle way. We're, we're gonna we're gonna yeah. go into that here in just a second. So <laughs> sorry, um, sorry. You're jumping ahead, getting the audience I've, all excited. Be, so, sorry, man. You know what we're gonna do is you know as soon as somebody donates 500 bucks, we're gonna throw <laughs> those images up, right? So that you know me and Holly can fund our next trip to Salem. Um, kidding, folks. Sort of. No, he's not. <laughs> So uh, the rainbow has been inverted by the gay community from Genesis nine seventeen. One of you want to cover that one? Well, I, I think we covered it on the last show. It was the promise of God to never, you know, God. Okay, first, did we? Yeah. Yeah, and so, but you know, on that topic, which is I love it because it's, people are afraid to talk about it. But let's look at inversion. L let's look at how people, let's say, with autism or Down syndrome or even a homosexual is now in, is is lifted up as as a model uh and and i think it has value because all things in nature that were created um have value the the issue is why is it being propped up why is that now what we strive for it used to be the shows and the things that were propped up were families that we strive to be like but we weren't because we were broken now they invert it and take the blessed, like they said, switching of positions. They show the most degraded family, you know, the most dysfunctional relationships. And, and instead of us striving for that, we go, ah, I'm good <laughs> compared to them. Right. Mm -hmm. So now uh, getting to the next page and the images, Mark, this one is yours. So why don't I just 
cover our side of the screen for a minute and you can uh, talk about your breakdown here. Is that all right? Oh, sure. All right. So I'm going to do that now. Here we go. So is this the is my is this the picture that I have a bunch of handwriting on? Yes, exactly, with the Star of David. Okay, so uh, Jan was really big on the number twelve. So so we kind of you know these little things come from the the we call it the Ethernet of Truth, um, which the internet was modeled off of after. And we were talking about twelve symbolism of twelve, twelve, twelve. And then I went, hey, wait a minute, the Star of David, the six. And if you take the the hexagram points and flip it in, that's the inversion. So I'm like, that's 12. And then I just started looking at the shape more. And so I was just jotting down some notes here so I could remember when, when I talked with Jan about it. And, and so the, excuse, excuse the, the writing there, but basically um, if you look at the triangle pointing upwards, you can see the top, that's the grammar or the truth. That's which is which we call God, which Jan keeps saying, you guys got to figure it out when we say God, it's not a deity. That's what they do to control you. We're trying to free you from that control. We're just talking logos. truth. It's logos. It's truth. So you live in truth. You're living in God because that's what is real. Everything else is a fantasy, like your virtual reality or TV shows, you know, jump into that, but understand what you're doing. So then you have that, you could see on that triangle, it's, upright and then it's just inverted and then through that middle is birth of the middle way this is the hybrid this is what's coming next um for a very long time you would have your thesis antithesis right but alchemy is where you take two the male and the female and you make a child right in mathematics one plus one is two but in alchemy or god act or creation the one and one can make three and so the birth of the middle way so if you had, if we could put the Freemason thing, it's the same thing. You have the square with the compass coming down, and that's the same thing. They're all, it's all sexual images because what is the generative principle? It's creation. It requires male and female, and that's why it's so funny when people are so obsessed with homo homosexuality. I'm like, I get it, that exists, but homosexual homosexuality make themselves extinct. Because the generative principle requires the masculine and the feminine, the male and the female. I'm not trying to be, you know, divisive. That's just a fact. That's a, that is natural law. And that's why since the beginning of time, those who hate that there's written laws that we have to follow, those that hate that there's order, that they don't want to find out and have to obey, they want to corrupt and, and do everything. So this image was that kind of playing with it. And you'll see that you could flip it on that star. You'll see how the logic flips, the rhetoric flips, the grammar flips. And that was that going back to that triangle of seeking truth where it's this wide and you don't know, but then it keeps narrowing down. This is also the scientific method before it got hijacked, right? Right. All right. So I'm going to pull that down. Now yeah. we're back up and uh, go on to the next one here. Now, you had gone okay so there's one more page here and you have it broken down with the trinity inversion father truth uh becomes mother primacy mm. of consciousness son living in truth do as thou wilt you know we have somebody in there promoting do what thou wilt and libertarianism which uh is when you Very when thalima. you get this stuff that's false too and then holy spirit source truth becomes mass media internet etc yeah, remember we were talking about how man tries to copy nature, like whether it's, you know, marijuana for cancer treatment, the marinol, you know, uh, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, where you have access to it, if you, if you have the cojones to walk in truth, um, then it just starts coming, that they created the internet of truth, that's the false um, Holy Spirit, right? And then when you have the Father, Father God, which is just truth, so just think all that is real and is existing, and it's the, you flip that to the, the mother, and then it gets to how do you feel? So that's the inverse of the masculine to the feminine. Then you have the son, who is, I'm going to live in truth, in harmony the best I can, which is that's why Jesus is so powerful. And then, and then you flip it, and now you got that guy who said, "Do as thou wilt," versus living in harmony and trying to find truth. Because if I want to live in reality, 
look, if you want to live in the artificial world, go to the prestigious school, join a sorority and fraternity, do all your stupid rituals and sexual perversions, give them their guarantees, and you're going to get some earthly treasures. But, you know, just be careful because as you move up, if your conscience isn't in the stinking freezer, it's going to eat at you. And then when you start to do the general principle of creating life and then start thinking about your kids, all of a sudden you wake up to being not the center of the universe. And, and then you're going to shit your pants and then you'll go to rehab and they'll reprogram you so you can get back and do the work for them. That's, that's what they do with the stars, right? When they all go to rehab, they're just getting reprogrammed. All right, so uh, let's hit the next one. Did you want to cover the uh, golden ratio, Fibonacci, or? Well, you know that golden ratio. The reason why I brought that up is you were you and um, Robert came up with this brilliant thing of weakness to strength. Do you remember that? Like, person alone is the most vulnerable. Then you join to two people, right? And then when you get the two people a little bit stronger, then you get a smaller tribe, and the tribe is joined to make a nation. Do you remember that, Jan? Vaguely. I'm not off the top of my head. Sorry. Oh, well, you, Robert, created this really cool graphic. And then I was like, you know what? I think it's more fights. If you're looking at natural progression, look at that, the, the golden ratio, the one and one and two, and the two and one is three, then three and five is eight. That's really how freedom expands from the vulnerable to the strong being of one mind in a large community. And it's all done through free will, by the way. This is why you want to be of one mind. Uh, and, and in the family, that's easy because you have a king and a queen and you have, you know, order and you have that tradition passed down that gets, I think that there's instinctual memory in the heart. I think there's some things that can't be explained just from the undeveloped soul. There's some things that characteristics that come out that have been passed through the blood, which is a whole nother discussion. <laughs> All right, let's see. So, you know, this is going to go deep here. So this is a logo that comes from the, I forget what it's called, in Israel. Uh, it, it, this uh, this is J the James's oh, yeah. church in Israel, brother of Jesus. And that's this l logo here on this piece of pottery, whatever it was. That's where it was found. And uh, we've seen it elsewhere. But this symbol, in our opinion, is a symbol of inversion. Uh, inversion and, and I call it the symbol of everything because it exposes so much. Mm. But uh, it breaks down into uh, the fish and then the, uh, the menorah and the triangle that would form the, the Star of David. And then they bring it together. And so... When we get into this this whole symbol here, let me just move that in the middle so we're not all covered up if I can get it going there. So the symbol itself, when you stare at it and take it all in, first what it's showing you is that Christianity pointed downward or logos has been inverted. It's pointed downward. And then many suggest that the menorah up on the top is and you know so this as right hand path in logos logos or truth would be at the top and then that would be the new man born in truth or freedom and so uh you know that would be the right hand path which is thesis logos the word truth as light which is uh john one christians trivia method truth worship logic uh, truth, honesty, honor, integrity, the masculine, Abba, Father, the new man born into truth, freedom, etc. So, um, you know, that's, uh, uh, somebody make a comment. You know, so, did you want to cover something there? I'd like to jump in if no, you don't mind. Well, no. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, the menorah, let's remember that was the symbol of, of Judaism, right? Right. People think the star of David is the symbol of Judaism. That's a symbol of Zionism. Right. Uh, and, and the so, menorah has also been equated to uh, the devil's pitchfork as well. And, and, and you can look at the right and the left, too, and then the process of lighting them. But look at the, if you look at the, the, the marriage of the menorah or Judaism with Christianity, which is the Pisces, the symbol of the fish, which they would do that secret symbol in the sand, you know, that little 
arc and then someone would complete it. Uh, the marriage of the two is Zionism. And, and, and I know being raised uh, in a Catholic family practicing the philosophy of Christianity, uh, that I know that Zionism runs rampant in the Christian church, which I always found fascinating because, you know, in the, in the Christian church, non-denominational, um, the Jews are the chosen people. They're God's chosen people. And thank God we are told that he opened it up, you know, to, to us measly Gentiles, right? Um, Which is a total inversion in itself. Yeah, because the truth is available to all. Listen, the, some people have well, less Judaism. And, and like we talked about with, with uh, E. Michael Jones last week, a Jew is anyone who denies logos. So logos thesis had to be before antithesis. It's actually Judaism. And then from Judaism, they inverted everything into Judaism and they put the Old Testament before the New Testament, invert the whole thing again. So it's another inversion, you know, yes. so they're, they're constantly doing these inversions with this stuff. Um, inversion crypto, you know, yep. it's a hiding. So, I think there's an inversion of Jews, though. Probably, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So with Christians, I think. Right, and when we talk about the menorah, and uh, you know, we're talking about covenants with God, and you brought up uh, Christianity. A lot of you know modern uh, Christianity in the United States, especially, promotes Zionism. And if you think about it, like they're calling for um, the end times. Like those Christians want the revelations. They want the end of the world, you know, because they think that that's how Jesus is going to come back. So in a lot of ways, like they're, they're coming from it in a way that's promoting violence against Jews and against the state of Israel because they want the destruction in order to bring about the end of the world. You know, that's what we're talking about. And as, um, as uh, Joe Biden said, you know, um, he calls himself a Zionist. He says you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. And if you just look at our how we lobby uh, the, the lobbyists and uh, all the money that we put into that state, it's pretty obvious that, you know, the United States is very firmly Zionist in that way. And when you go all the way back to the Puritans, you can see why. But, you know, and... Throughout the New Testament, it warns specifically about accepting those, you know, like uh, Revelation 3, 9, you know, those who claim they are Jews and are not. And, uh, you know, the whole section in Revelation 3 is about exposing that inversion. Um, so, uh, you know, and, you know, the they say the New Testament is anti-Semitic because the whole thing is about exposing uh, uh Jewish sophistry. Now, so I want to get into the next image here, which is left-hand path. And uh, so second antithesis, dark as light, Satanist, sophism, or the trivium inverted, fire worship, which we can see uh, as I'm pulling up the image here, uh, emotion control th controls thinking rather than logic, devil, evil, lies, deception, which can be inverted into the feminine, and that's a whole other issue. We, you know, that we're not going to go in, in depth into Lilith tonight, but that ties into li Lilith. It's huge. And uh, so those who want to look more into that can can research Lilith. But and then the new man is born in lies or Satanism and slavery. So then we see the symbol is entirely inverted. Logos is at the bottom, and then we see the inversion with the triangle flipping one to the other. And then putting the, the 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 fire the false light. It's not the light of truth at the top. It's the light of the menorah. Whereas in logos, it's the light of truth and the light of reason. Um. So just to jump in real quick about um, Israel as well, and with the creation of the state. So that was an inversion as well. So in uh, traditional Judaism, the uh, the temple cannot be rebuilt until the messiah comes back and um in when reform judaism promotes the fact that the temple and the state of israel can be made first and then the messiah can come back so uh, it was created as an inversion and that's what a lot of there is still a lot of infighting amongst jews about 
you know, was, is this cart before the horse? And I think that that's an example of inversion creating that state in 1947. And then you have another inversion when you realize that Israel was the united 12 families that going back to the shows with Robert Rowe and I, and then that is the true Israel, this covenant between the 12 families. And then when that rises up again, but what they've done is they've inverted that into this false Israel in Palestine rather than it being Tartary, which, you know, it, it spanned likely most of the Northern Hemisphere. So, uh, let's see. And then, uh, here, let's go. Boy, it keeps shifting over. And then the middle path, Revelation 3, 15, 16. Uh, that's your moderates, etc. Fence sitters. Uh, and, and in Revelation 3, 15, 16 calls it vomit. Uh, Jesus or God is going to spew you out of your mouth for being a moderate for, for trying to appease both sides. You're either a Satanist or you live in truth. Don't be a freaking moderate. But Jan, if you're a moderate, people call you nice. Well, right. Yes, yes, that's true. That's true. So you, you know, can be nice if you're a moderate, which means, again, we showed that wait, earlier. There's nice a, meaning, you know, foolish, stupid, etc. So if you want to be nice, you can you can be senseless. Or and, if you don't want to have any enemies, like the the Abbott brothers sing this song at the end. It's like, I have no enemies. So I'm singing that with my daughter while we're playing guitar. And I'm like, wait a minute. Only nice people have no enemies. Someone living in truth, is, the evil people, the, the pedophiles, the murderers, the, the liars are not going to like me. Right. So, well, so that how status, many friends did Jesus have? Twelve, and then everybody else hated him, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, well, they like uh, him except when they feel convicted, right? So when now to... the middle path is a, also the middle of the road fallacy. There is no truth or no lie, no good or no bad. And uh, so the moderate is transhumanism, transgender, the LGBT QWERTY community, it's the eunuch, and it's the ultimate slave. So rather than uh, somebody being born in logos or truth or in just lies or deception, what they try to do is they're going to say, there is no truth, there is no lie, it's this quantum lie, and they just make a bigger lie, and then we're going to birth you through the center of the lie itself. And so they're literally birthing this false reality. reality out of the center of the Star of David. Just think of the just think of the phrases, the memes they use. You know, it's a new dawn. It's it's the change, the new man, the new way. You know, it's all this stuff that you you know, I was caught in it for a little bit because hippie is kind of a rejection of government institution and its love. But then you find out it's all this Hinduism and Philema, it's all religion, even though you just jump out of one control grid to another. So I, I always think of like a tune in, drop out is one thing, you know, just promoted, just checking out of society. And uh, granted, I, I fully admit to have fallen for the middle path for a long time. Um, you know, this idea people talk about atheism well you're still you still have theist in that word and um <laughs> so and you can create uh, you know how can you create something from nothing? nothing so that's metaphysics as well how something can simultaneously exist and not exist at the same time and then that promotes moral relativism so i know it's hard for people to try to grasp like thinking that you know if you just check out like then uh, then it's fine, you know, and like you said, you'll have no enemies, everything will be fine. Well, as soon as you start to speak in truth, even a tiny bit, you're going to have haters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and then it's, uh, what is this, Second uh, John 1, 4 through 6, you know, and that's where this comes from. If you continue in my word or truth, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So it's following logos or the truth that keeps us free to begin with so if you are not interested in logos or truth you're not interested in freedom what well, it's your definition of freedom that's the key though because people think freedom is like i'm just so horny i want to have sex with that monkey or you know i i, I <laughs> 
I want to do whatever I want. Who are you to tell me, you know, and, and these consequences. And then I get disease and I'm like, do what thou wilt is the whole in the law. Yeah. The whole in the law. That was the funny one we came up with. And, and, but the freedom is this, if you want to live in reality, it'll set you free because you're just learning rules. You're learning, you know, rocks in the middle of the desert and sun. If you put your bare foot on it, you're going to burn, right? If you, know, you don't take it, water to the desert, you're going to freaking die. Yeah. If you, know, if, you, if, you, if you jump off a cliff, you know, you're going to fall. Yeah. If you treat someone with total disrespect, they're going to either smack you or be disrespectful to you. And, and, you know, what people don't get is that what, you know, and especially with the New Testament, the laws of, you know, that are laid out there is it's natural law, the laws of nature. So if you don't follow these things, then your life is screwed. And if you, you know, if you're constantly putting things in your body that are not good for you, you're going to be sick, you're not going to perform well, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, if you're overweight or any of these things, it's your body telling you you're not living in truth. And then yeah. and then you have this inversion going on in society where they want us to accept that that is OK now to be obese rather than recognizing that, hey, well, this is something that I'm lying to myself about. And it's actually not good for me. Yeah. You know, what? Uh, being obese is is I feel bad for um, um, for my obese friends that I love, my, you know, my mother who passed away, Carrie, it's such a public sin. I mean, you're basically announcing to the world you're a glutton and an addict and you can't live in truth because it's apparent. And then, but the inversion of that is I was born big boned. Uh, this is, <laughs> fat is beautiful. People used to love unhealthy women, you know, and go to Samoa. Yeah, look it, I get it. There could be programming in their culture to, to lift that up. But the reality is, is that your organs are stressed, you're inflamed, you're breathing like a, a you know, trying to get air, walking upstairs. It's just the truth. So, man, I get it. I, I love you because I got some sins in my life that I haven't corrected that aren't so public, thank God. But for me to say to you, <laughs> continue what you're doing, it's working is a lie. And if I love you, I'm going to speak truth to you. But then that's when you lose friends and, you know, people get mad and they're you saying, you're so, so ju judgmental. You know, shoot, listen, listen, I was 35, 40 pounds heavier than this before Yon, you know, I can only take I so used, much. Every Yon's time I'd go over to your place, I'd hound you about eating wheat and stuff. And, and my wife wanted years. to slap him because, <laughs> you know, I say, hmm, I thought you were gluten free. So even in our journey, it takes time, right? It's not like, bam. It, but once, once we did it and, and you live it, you realize, wow, that addiction. And then when you have humble enough, we talk about this a lot, Jan, when you humble yourself, you start to really then grow because you have to go, well, shoot, it's obvious. I'm just blind to it and everybody's afraid to tell me the truth because they want to be nice. Um, <laughs> except my wife, you know, but my wife will correct me, but I'm like, oh, she's a woman. She doesn't get it, you know? So for many years, I just wasn't ready to handle the truth. But once you are and you change it, you realize I was addicted, right? right. It's an addiction. It's an addiction well, to and evil. It, and it's got gluteomorphine in it, so wheat does. So it is actually addictive like heroin. And when you get to about the two-month mark, you go through withdrawals like you're coming off of this stuff. And then all yeah. of a sudden, it's like this clarity fog clears, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I, I asked my children uh, at, the, at my classroom, you know, my 30 kids, we talk about addiction and, and having a power over yourself, you know, with those Trivium cards you get. We're always talking Trivium. And I go, so who's addicted to TV? And no one raises their hand. <laughs> so I go, shut it off for one week. One week. No one could do it. The only kids that are able to do it, they don't have TV already. But I said, well, then at least live in truth and say, wow, Mr. Well, I tried. And I am addicted. And that should tell you right there that you're living in an inversion. Now, uh, Mark, do you want to read some of the last uh, quotes off the last page we have highlighted there? And we'll wrap it up. Sure. The last uh, two pages there. Are we talking about like the truth shall set you free? Right. Well, I think I just read the truth shall sh 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 uh, set the you free. So everything below that. Okay. So, um, Okay, uh, well, the children of the devil, I mean, I, do you want me to read that one? Sure, why not? Okay, so just, let's just think of this. Uh, we just talked about the weapon of, um, about taking truth 
and personifying it onto a deity, creating a deity. So you could think the same thing with the devil. It's just the inversion or the rebellion to that natural law, the truth that we talk about, which we say is God, but everybody gets confused when we say that. So it says this, uh, it was uh, 2 John 1, 42. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. So that just means that if you're living in truth, and that was your purpose is living truth, you would follow me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because he cannot hear my word, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him, the antithesis of truth. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convince of me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. So it's very simple. It's, it's that saying for those who have ears to hear will hear. Right. And, and that goes back to, are you seeking truth? Or are you seeking confirmation for your tribe and your group? And then it's like the next passage, John 8, 31 through 41. I'm just going to read a little bit yes. here. I'll show it on the screen. Uh, uh, I rejoice greatly that I have found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from thy father. So it's just about truth. I mean, when you get it, the whole thing is about truth over and over. And the New Testament actually repeats it from like, who knows how many hundreds of different directions to get you to see that it's about truth and living and walking in truth. And it's, you know, and once you get it and you see it, it's like, aha. But what they've done is they've inverted it into this deity worship so that people don't get it's about truth. Like, you know, what is right? Why do we call it right or righteous? What's correct? What's wrong? What's left? Right hand path, left hand path. So that comes right out of these, these ideas. And, uh, you know, so when we, when we get it, it's just about living in truth, you know, and you, you use the trivium to find truth. And these books help us to learn what truth is so that we can walk and live in consistency with natural law, you know, AKA, you know, the laws of Moses or the laws of God, if you want to get tripped up in that, it's just the laws of nature. If you jump up, you're going to fall down, period. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, that's, that's about all I had to add. Did you want to add anything else, Mark? Well, you know, I don't, I used to think calling someone left or right was just a political term. No, when you say someone's right, that means there's a confirmation of truth. Um, and when we, we looked back into the, the actual paths. They always said the left, you know, you're to my left. When you look at Baphomet, these esoteric um, Satan worshipers or the, the inverters, the right hands up, right? And the left hands down. Um, right and left has been used since the beginning of the of words and consciousness. The left hand path means keeping secrets it means separation it means not not being in harmony a right hand path is living and walking in truth and empowering more to do it it isn't about leverage it isn't about tricking you and flipping it so i could i know the magician's trick and i have all off of you and i can make you wonder it's about we are we're basically the the magicians they hate us right we're telling the magician's trick right <clears throat> That's and that's really simple in the Bible. And by the, Bible, the way, it's not a flattering title. If you look this stuff up and research it and think about it yourself, that's also an inversion. Those who call it a flattering title. Oh, yeah. What did you want to add? Nothing? No. Oh. So did you you, you have uh, anything or are we about ready to wrap it up here? No, we're, we're pretty good with this. Just look, if you look at life and just keep flipping things that they tell you, especially the things that come from our gatekeepers, right? From education, from music. Remember how motion plays in that one. Hans talks about that a lot. Uh, from politics to sports, just listen to what they say, health, and then start flipping it. 
looking at the reverse and researching it, right. you will be so surprised what you find. And you're going to go, oh, my gosh. And if you, awful. if you, and if you memorize the other fallacies too, you can see those, but you know, the, probably the biggest one that they use is this Kabbalistic inversion fallacy. You know, it took us three and a half hours to expose it. And thank you, Adam and Anthony again. Anthony, I think, donated like 70 or 80 bucks tonight. So thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, everyone who supported. I don't remember everybody's name in there. Uh, Able Danger, everybody who supported the show tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Mark. Thanks thank for you, the Holly. audience participation. And uh, that's a wrap. Did you want to say goodbye? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can't, Holly and Jan, can't wait to see the stuff that you're disco discovering. And I mean, I think that's going to be another huge explosion into a whole other area. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk some more about antinomianism pretty soon. Great. All right. Good night, everyone. Thanks for Good night, joining. everyone. See you soon.